PC with Professor Arnon Afek, Sheba Hospital. I'm Uri Dromi, Director General of JPC. This is the first in a series of webinars we will run from now on. The next one will run tomorrow, 2 p.m., with Daphna Liel, political commentator of Channel 12, on the political situation. We will create a WhatsApp group for you uh, for this series, so you'll always be in the loop if you wish. I want to thank Professor uh, uh, Afek for taking the time being with us today. Professor Afek is acting director of the Sheba General Hospital. Previously, he was director general of the Israel Ministry of Health until 2017. He's a member of the Bureau of Governors of the OECD Health Committees. So he can speak not only on what Sheba is doing on the Israeli front line fighting the coronavirus, but he can discuss Israeli and European public health policies as well. I want to thank uh, Yoel Haevin of Sheba International and Raya Kuval of JPC for facilitating this webinar. Professor Afek will start uh, perhaps with a short introduction and then we'll open up for Q&A. You are on mute, so please type your questions. Professor Afek will answer them. If there is an overflow, uh, you'll see me waving like this, so stop typing until I signal you uh, to go on. Uh, last thing, luckily for us, Professor Afek is also fluent in Italian, so we'll finish the English session and then he can speak to the Italian correspondents in their language. Uh, the rest, of course, are free to leave. Uh, we record this webinar and we can send you a link immediately. Later, it will run on YouTube. Professor Afek, please. So first, good afternoon and thank you very much for arranging this webinar. We appreciate always sharing the knowledge with our friends and learning from other people as well. This is part, I think, of the medical world and what we are doing also here in Shiva Medical Center. Uh, regarding what Israel has been doing uh, since the beginning of, of this uh, epidemic, and was basically concentrated on what we were doing here in Sheba, preparing the first uh, specific department to uh, isolate or to quarantine infect people who are uh, at, were at the Diamond Princess, arrived to Israel. Then we moved forward in order to create a whole department just for these people who are sick, in this department, we were able to hospitalize the first patient in Israel, and the rest of the hospital came and sh we shared our knowledge with them, enabling the rest of the Israeli healthcare system to learn and to prepare itself for the next step, which is wide hospitalization of patients. And now we are more than 1,000 uh, certified corona or proven corona patients in Israel. The next step, of course, in confronting this uh, epidemic is what we learned from our Italian colleagues, is the need for acute care, the need of intensive care unit. That's why we are opening, or in fact, we opened this morning, the first department for acute care treatment of patients and having there around 40 ICU places for patients. Other hospitals are following as well, and for example, Rabin Medical Center set up a whole hospital designated for corona patients, and departments are opening in the rest of the hospitals in Israel. What we also did here in Shiva, which is quite unique, I believe, is we opened a department of psychiatry for corona patients as they pose really very challenging treatment, um, I would say treatment, uh, needs and, and treatment options, and we built a specific department for them in order to, con to bring them all here, at least at the beginning, and take care of them here at Shiba. And we, what we are thinking right now is the management of this hospital is how to prepare ourselves for the next step. All of this is being done together with the public health measures taken by the Ministry of Health and the government of Israel, which are basically like the rest of countries are doing, um, all the people who arrive from abroad need to be quarantined for um, two weeks. Then the entire population is put under um, limitation of movement. You can call it curfew. But um, 
again, it's been done with a lot of thinking and trying to let people have some very limited option, of course, to go vote and buy groceries as well as do some limited sport. So this is basically what's been going on right now in Israel, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Can you uh, elaborate, there's a question, can you elaborate on the uh, psychiatry department? What's going on there? What we did is we took one of our departments. First, we uh, separated it from the rest of the hospital by uh, putting all the protective measures. We are training the staff. Training the staff is not less important than any other actions we are taking. Remember, psychiatrists are not used to take care of these patients. Now, of course, we are speaking about patients we are, are either asymptomatic or um, are not, have a, a mild form of the disease. Uh, and there they'll be isolated in this department given the right type of drugs which they need for their own ongoing psychiatric ward. We are also including their uh, in internists and people who are experts in treating the corona because it's going to be a joint effort both from our Department of Internal Medicine together with our Department of Psychiatry. There was a question from BBC, Gidi Kleiman, who's uh, online. Uh, was or is Israel prepared for, for, for this uh, crisis? was prepared or is preparing? Uh, you can answer both. Well, I don't think that this scenario appeared in, the, in what we were preparing in the past. Israel has a quite, uh, I would say, a healthcare system which knows how to take care of emergency situations. Unfortunately, here in Israel, we are faced with many emergency situations. Uh, mainly from conventional warfare and operations. So we are used to work together. This, in fact, is one of the main characteristics of the Israeli healthcare system. We differentiate it with, from other countries. All, the, all of Israel works under the uh, Supreme Health Authority, and it, which includes the healthcare funds, the hospitals, the EMS services, police, army, and all of us know how to work together under the director of the Ministry of Health. And we are used to meet also in peacetime in order to do drills and to prepare drills and to learn from lessons we, and for, to deal even with day-to-day -day mini emergency situations. Such a system enabled us to deal with uh, much more elaborate uh, uh, emergencies such as the corona epidemic. But to tell you that we were prepared in the fact that we had enough uh, ICU uh, beds or that we are system which is quite strained, as Israel doesn't spend a lot of money on the health care. We spend just 7.4% of our GDP on health compared to the 9% of the OECD or 11% of Germany, not to speak about the 16, 17% of the USA is, of course, a unrealistic description as a public healthcare system. We are very, very efficient healthcare system, ranked sixth in the Bloomberg's uh, um, ranking of efficiency of healthcare systems. And of course, the problem is that we don't have enough acute care beds. So even in regular winter, we are faced more than 90, even more than 100% occupancy rate. So taking all of that into account, the picture is quite varied. But the system, the way the system runs, enabled us to react very, very quickly, which is very important as the WHO report on what happened in China stated very clearly that what the Chinese did, reacting very quickly, enabled them to control the situation. Uh, but in China, you can do things you can't do in Israel, I, I guess, no? Well, of course, the geopolitical and the structure of the community and, and the leadership in China allows them to do things which in other countries are quite difficult to do, such in, I would say it's not just Israel. If you look at what the South Koreans are doing, it's not exactly what the Chinese are doing, but we always so have to remember the Chinese were the people to face the, the worst or the most immediate danger at the beginning 
and they had to learn on the way and what they did is quite remarkable. Think of what they were doing. They were building two hospitals for 5,000 people in, in no time at all. This is remarkable. Second, they were able to control the, out, the epidemic. They took all the necessary steps. So I think that what the Chinese did, not only their own country, which is of course very, very important, but also helped the, the rest of the world in trying to contain the, the primary phase of the epidemic, giving time for the rest of the countries to prepare themselves. Which brings me to a question raised by one of the participants. Isn't that the time to uh, move the authority to the Ministry of Defense or to the military, which is maybe more prepared uh, for such a crisis? Each part of the healthcare system, I said to you before that the Supreme Health Authority knows to work together, the Ministry of Health, together with the Home Front Command, together with the IDF Surgeon General. And we, they all know, and we all know to work together. Um, in fact, in my own room behind me, I don't know if you can see, but there is a picture, I'll, I'll point to it. In this picture, you can see the, myself as Director General of the Ministry of Health, sitting together with the Surgeon General of the IDF, which now is my boss, uh, at Shiba Medical Center, Professor Kreis, and we were running the operation. At that time, it was an operation, uh, I don't remember how you say it in English, Tsukeitan in... Um, uh, in defensive, uh, I think defensive shield. Defensive shield, right, you're right. We were running the defensive shield operation, providing health care to the Israelis, both civilians and troops, as well as to trying to assist also the Palestinian humanitarian help for those who, were need, who needed our help. So we were running the entire healthcare system, the army, together with the Ministry of Health. This is the right way, the right system to do things because every side has its own advantages. The army logistic is something that no other place or organization in Israel has. On the other hand, the expertise of the Ministry of Health is also vital. So the main way to do this thing is just to work together. Uh, Hannah Beris, who is online, uh, corrects me. It's called Defensive Shield. Uh, and, defensive. All right. Yeah, yeah. And, and she also had a follow-up uh, question on the psychiatry department. Are the patients there uh, infected with corona? Well, that's the idea that we don't have yet patients like that, but we are preparing for the next, something that will give an answer to the entire state of Israel. I hope it will be enough, of course, but other, of course, if we see we, we are getting more and more patients, other hospitals or psychiatric or mental health institutions can come in and, and, take, and take part of the patient load, but till now we, don't, we didn't have yet such patients and we are very happy. A question from Irene uh, Wong uh, about the index patient. I mean, do we know how many people are infected? How, how do we monitor it? What, how do we uh, qualify compared to other countries? Well, Israel enjoys a, a very unique geopolitical status, which makes us practically an island. Although we are not South Korea and we are not Japan or Singapore, the fact that we are, our borders are closed all over us means that we are separated from the rest of, of the world. So it enabled us, at least in the beginning, to try to uh, stop all the people who are arriving and then put them into quarantine. The, the idea is, was again, that if someone develops symptoms, he can scream and we will not have a widespread in the community. This phase, unfortunately, has passed. And now we think, we know that there are cases in the, in the community. So we are, in fact, in what we call the mitigation phase to control the epidemic. And now what we are planning to do, or rather the Ministry of Health is planning to do, is to try to screen in the community to see the extent of the disease in the community by um, taking um, swabs for people from certain com 
community clinics, and that's the way we are doing each year with the flu epidemic. We try to do the same with the oral. What about the protection of the of the medical staff? There's a lot of controversy it's about it. Vital, vital, vital to the ongoing functioning of the hospital. And in order to do so, what we need to do are is the following. What we are doing now is the following. The first thing, we change the way we are working. This is something very crucial to the health, to the medical profession. We don't hold any more staff meetings. We don't put everyone in the same room. Once we are sitting all together, we sit apart from each other with masks on our faces. Second, we separated our teams in two different teams, each one arriving one after the other, so it's 12, 24 off, and such a team does not meet. So one team goes, the other team comes in, and they communicate through VC or, or, or their iPhones. No personal meeting in order not, if someone needs to go into quarantine or so, he will have to. We are putting masks on the faces of the people, so even if they'll be exposed, it, it will reduce the chance of their going into quarantine. There are certain departments who cannot work in the 12-24 shifts, so in these departments, we isolated each physician in his own room. He sees his patient. And if a consultation is needed, it's been done at a distance and again with face masks. So we are doing our utmost to protect our staff and to prevent um, part of our staff being either isolated or um, quarantined. And of course, uh, providing enough protective gear is as important as just what I said. Can you say something about the remote control uh, treatment? Oh, yes. What we've been doing in our, um, we call it internal medicine C, which stands for Corona, which is Kuf in Hebrew, is trying to minimize the need for our pay physicians to enter the wards. So what we do, we, we planned monitoring system throughout our uh, uh, ward. For example, we have a monitoring for um, breathing, we have a monitor for glucose, we have a robot that can move apart from one side to another. We have uh, a, a, in Israel invention by a company called Taito that also can measure your temperature and your heart rate and your blood pressure. So we are trying to minimize the contact between one patient, the patient and the staff. And we are doing all the technology necessary or that we have. Are you in touch with the, your uh, supporters abroad? I mean, uh, what is the level of interest in Israel abroad or everybody is a, or they only care about their own uh, tourist uh, troubles? Well, the answer is no. We are in touch with our uh, colleagues all over the world, especially in Italy, in um, uh, France, but also in other countries. And we are we speak with them all the time. Every the the work, the medical profession is is in fact international. So we are speaking also with our Singapore. We got even. I'll show you in a second. Here, I don't know if you can see, is it clear enough, Rui? Yes. All right, so I'm trying to put it in front of the camera. This is okay. a booklet we received in English from our Chinese friends, and it's a handbook of COVID-19 prevention and treatment. And uh, it's from Jay Zhang University School of Medicine. I hope I, I pronounce it well. But we are, I read through it, and it's a co accumulation of their, their experience and knowledge of how to treat and to prevent the spread of the corona. We learned from them, so we truly appreciate what they gave us. And of course, we'll share, we'd like also to share it with other places in Israel and abroad. Okay. Uh, show it again, please, on the camera, and raise it, raise it a bit, because we need to see. Okay, that's good. So maybe you can see right now the, the name. I probably I mispronounced the name of the university. But your uh, finger, uh, your, your finger covers our prevention. That's it. So move. And then it. send it to us, and we will send the journalist the name of the of the brochure. All right, with okay. pleasure. Um, 
Okay, so this is what we received just this Friday and I read through it and it's a lot of experience which we value very much. So thank you for our Chinese uh, colleagues for writing all their, ex or not all, but writing their experience in treating the disease. Screen cover, okay, no. We need another shot of you holding it. Hold it a bit further from the... Is this okay? Yeah, raise it a bit and yeah. That's that's good, Yana. I, I hope, Hannah. I hope you're happy with this. Okay. Any more questions from the participant? If not, uh, we will uh, thank the journalists and and uh, ora passiamo all'italiano. Professor. La, 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 la sola problema che che hai detto che parlo italiano molto bene e non è la verità. Non parlo abbastanza bene, mi scusatemi, perché 30 anni sono già passati del tempo che ho vissuto in Italia. Era per me un'esperienza meravigliosa, ma poi ero giovane e ora un po' meno. Diciamo così. Ok. Uh... Parla benissimo, non è vero. <ride> Aiutami se mi manco una parola, parlo, parlerò in inglese e poi potete tradurre in italiano. Ok, grazie professore per aver dedicato del tempo a stare con noi oggi. Buona fortuna Chiedo. per il tuo importante lavoro nella lotta contro il coronavirus. Grazie anche ai giornalisti e ci vediamo domani alle due. Arrivederci. Qualcuno ha avuto una questione? Sì. Volete mandare qualche cosa? Sì. Okay. sì. Io, io volevo chiedere, io sono Elia Milani, lavoro per, per Mediaset, volevo chiedere una cosa riguardo al, uh, ai contatti che ci sono stati con l'Italia in, sì. in questo periodo. Che tipo di contatti sono? Sono a livello di governo, a livello di Ministero della Salute italiana? Come, come e su che cosa ci si confronta in, questi, in queste ore? Eh, alla nostra parte un contatto con i medici e, e, e la persona che lavora nell'ospedale, no, piuttosto in Lombardia, e sono di livello per, diciamo, personale e professionale. Per esempio, avanti di aver aperto il nostro, eh, nostro dipartimento della eh, ICU, non so come si dice in italiano, Abbiamo parlato... Intensive Care Unit sono... Eh, sì, 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 sì. Unit. Sì. sì, esattamente. Abbiamo parlato con un professore al... che, fa... che ha un'operazione come questa, uno dei ospedali nel nord Italia. Non, non ricordo il suo nome, ma sì, è importante. Li posso chiedere ai miei colleghi con cui hanno parlato. Poi, vedete, nel televisione israeliano c'erano eh, fra il Facebook o delle altre media di comunicazione questo che dicono dei, eh, della persona che sono là in Milano e, e anche ci sono dei eh, medici israeliani che, che sono ora da voi e loro parlano con, con noi. E io diciamo così, a noi si sembra che quello che che succede ora al nord d'Italia e, 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 e posso anche usare il modo spaventoso e voglio, vogliamo fare tutto di non arrivare a questo modo. Certo. Eh, Lei, abbiamo tanta ammirazione al lavoro che fanno i, i, che vanno da noi nell'ospedale, da voi all'ospedale è qualcosa veramente, veramente ammirabile. Qual è, le faccio ancora questa domanda se posso, qual è il suo timore? Nel senso c'è ovviamente la paura che la situazione qui in Israele sia come quella italiana, al momento non c'è perché sono una situazione diversa, ma qual è la, la preoccupazione per un ospedale come appunto l'ospedale Sheba? Quale potrebbe essere un punto critico per, eh, per voi? Un punto critico è veramente la e la sicurezza dei nostri, eh, de, de la, dei medici, dei infermieri, questo è un, molto molto importante perché possiamo continuare a, a lavorare, allora questo è un gran problema. 
il secondo problema è, è veramente vedere se abbiamo la possibilità di trattare tutti che hanno bisogno. Non è il problema di Shiva, è il problema di tutto lo Stato di Israele, ma per, per far questo si deve ascoltare e fare esattamente questo che il Ministero della Sanità israeliano eh, di, di alla gente. E come in Italia, non tutta la gente israeliana ascolta a questo che gli dice il Ministero. Non siamo come i cinesi, siamo piuttosto come gli italiani e questo è un grande problema. Le chiedo l'ultima cosa sul reparto psichiatrico, che è una cosa che ovviamente in Italia non si sente perché è una situazione diversa. Mi può spiegare in italiano appunto questa apertura di un'area un uh, dove lavorano appunto uh, medici, psichiatri? Il problema è che quando ce, ce l'hai qualcuno che ha dei problemi psichiatrici e corona, normalmente sarà molto difficile di mettere in un dipartimento eh, della medicina interna, perché, ha, perché lui non e sarebbe per lui molto molto difficile di, di fare tutto che le dicono e là è molto molto importante. Allora abbiamo deciso di dedicare un posto, un dipartimento specialmente per loro, o il ora anche dei eh, internisti, dei eh, specialisti in la medicina interna e anche dei psichiatri che lavorano insieme per... Eh, per trattare, per eh, guarire questa gente eh, che ha bisogno, eh, che deve avere una medicina come tutti gli altri. E non abbiamo ancora l'esperienza di questo perché l'abbiamo già soltanto fatto, ma non, non era ancora aperto, ma siamo pronti quando ci saranno delle persone che av avranno un major affective disorder, o psicosi, o schizofrenia, tutte queste cose che avranno la, il bisogno, e corona, e, e avrebbe bisogno di essere in questo dipartimento. Le chiedo solo quanti sono gli psichiatri che lavorano in questo momento allo Sheba? Noi abbiamo tre dipartimenti, abbiamo dei de psichiatri, abbiamo preso uno di loro, l'abbiamo trasformato a questo, ma non so dirle ancora perché è già soltanto è stato preparato e non l'abbiamo ancora utilizzato. Ah, quindi è un progetto, cioè un'idea di... È già fatto, non è un progetto ah. di farlo, ma è già fatto. Abbiamo preso un dipartment, l'abbiamo eh, fatto tutto che è necessario per l'isolazione, eh, uh -huh. la eh, sicurezza del, della gente stessa, e poi quando ci saranno delle persone malate con corona e malattie psichiatriche, ah. possiamo mettere là, questo non esiste ancora in Israele, non so se ci sono degli altri paesi che l'hanno fatto, ma aspettiamo, e speriamo che non arriva, ma aspettiamo al primo eh, malato che arriverà là. Quindi siete... Professore, eh, bisogna andare via. Uh, grazie mille per uh, la tua generosità. Grazie mille professore, thank you so much. Grazie e buon curato e voglio soltanto dire da voi agli eh, italiani che per noi israeliani, tanti di, di, dei miei colleghi amano tantissimo l'Italia e speriamo che tutto va bene in Italia e che potrete fare... Eh, portare eh, quello che la gente d'Italia è necessaria. Okay. Grazie. Amen, amen. Tutto bene, professore. Ciao. Ciao.